11.5 is on what we call the binomial theorem. So like I said, this is going to be a shortcut for expanding things that are squared. Well, squared is not really hard to do, but cubed to the fourth, to the fifth, to the sixth, right, instead of multiplying everything out by foiling. So the first thing we're going to do is, surprise, multiply everything out by foiling. So if I have a plus b squared, what that means is that I have a plus b multiplied by a plus b. Right? We never bring that squared in and just say it's a squared plus b squared. Do you guys remember what I called that? <laughs> it is cheating. Yeah, the freshman dream, because a lot of IU students that are freshmen do that. That is what it's called, the freshman dream. All right, so we are going to foil this out. So when I foil, I'm going to take a times a, and I get a squared. And I'm going to do a times b, which is ab. And then I'm going to do a times b again, so another ab, and b times b. So b squared. So I end up getting a squared plus 2 times ab plus b squared because I had ab plus another ab, so 1ab plus 1ab is 2ab. Okay, and I think you guys kind of know that one. You guys get that if you're foiling like, you know, something like x plus 4 squared. Some of you guys know that shortcut, and you know that it's just going to be x squared plus 8x plus 16. Do you guys know that shortcut? where you just kind of double the product, 4 times x, put it in the middle. All right, so this next one, we have a plus b cubed. So this, again, is not a cubed plus b cubed. We can't do that. We have to write it as a plus b times a plus b times a plus b. And we do things one thing at a time. So when we see our a plus b times a plus b, we actually already did that part, right? So a plus b times a plus b is going to be a squared plus 2 times ab plus b squared. And then we have a plus b here. And then we multiply again. So this time it's not necessarily like air quotes foil, right? We don't call it foil because there's not four terms that were, you know, the first two times the first two. Uh, this time we're just calling it the, the distributive property. So we're going to take, which is really cool, we're going to take the a squared times the a and the a squared times the b. When we do, we get a cubed plus a squared b. And then we're going to take the 2ab times the a and 2ab times the b. So we're going to get 2a squared b and then 2ab times b is 2ab squared. And then we're going to take the b squared times the a and b squared times the b. So I get a b squared and I get b cubed. And I typically kind of write the terms in alphabetical order. Like if I had a squared b, I write it as a squared b instead of b a squared. Just so it's easier to find those like terms, which is what we're going to do now. So we're going to look for like terms. So if you remember, like terms are the same variables, like a and b, but also the same exponents on those variables. So like a squared b can combine with the other a squared b. Okay. So I'm going to start out with my a cubed, and I'm going to have plus 3a squared b. And then over here, I'm going to have 2ab squared plus another ab squared. So I get 3ab squared, and I get b cubed. And that's the answer. Okay, Kind of time consuming, right? We don't want to do this a lot. <laughs> it takes a lot of time. Okay, so it says you can continue the process. Should we do it again? No, please don't, Mrs. Fax. Please don't do this. So I'm going to tell you what it is. So it's going to be a to the fourth plus four a cubed b plus six a squared b squared plus four a b cubed plus b to the fourth. Okay, are we starting to see some patterns? Hmm, what about the A's? Let's look at the A's. Who can tell me what's happening with those A's? Yeah, it goes down, like A to the fourth, A to the third, A to the second, A to the first, and then no A's at the end, right? Does it make sense? Do you guys see the A's? Look at all these powers. What about the B's? Do they go down or do they go up? <laughs> they go up, right? So, like, if I start from the left and I go to the right, there's no B's, one B, two B's, right, B squared. 3b's, 4b's. Okay, but the weird thing is those numbers, the 4, 6, 4 in the middle. So we have 1, 4, 6, 4, and then 1. So this next one is going to be a to the 5th 
plus 5a to the 4th b plus 10a to the, whoops, not a to the 5th, a to the 3rd b to the 2nd plus another 10a to the 2nd b to the 3rd plus 5ab to the 4th plus b to the 5th. So do we see the A's go down, right? 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, none. The B's go up. What do we also notice about the A's and the B's? Look at their powers individually. Like this was A to the 4th and this was B to the 1st, 4 and 1. Do you guys see that? They do what? Yeah, so these are, this was 4 and 1, this is 3 and 2, this is 2 and 3. Yes, they do. They always add up to be that original exponent. Do you guys see this original exponent was 5? So all of those are adding up to be an exponent of 5. We had a to the 5th, that was 5. 4 and 1 for the next one. Make sense? So now the tricky part is knowing where these numbers come from. So Karen, I think I saw you. You were like, oh, I, I know Pascal's triangle. Do you know it? Ah, good. Okay, so basically it starts out with a triangle of 1s. So we have 1 on top and then 2 ones below it. And then each row is going to be the sum of the numbers above it. So the next row is going to be 1, 2, 1. And where that 2 comes from is it is the sum of the two 1s above it. So it's always 1s along the edges. And then the, each number in the middle is going to be the sum of the two numbers above it. So Karen, what's the next row? Exactly. Do you see what she's doing? So it's 1s along the sides. And then inside, this 3 was the sum of the 1 and the 2, and this 3 was the sum of the 2 and the 1. See how it works? 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. Now look up here. 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. Did you see it? Okay, so what do we think the next one is? Yeah. 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. Let's go to 7. Ah, not 15, 15. 15, 20, 15, 6, and 1. So it's like every other row will have that repeating in the middle. See how the last one was 10, 10? But now this one's 15, 20, 15 in the middle. So then we have 1, 7, 21, 35, uh-huh. Good. Does everybody get it? See where it's coming from? Not just this table here. This table's doing a really good job. Do you guys all see it? Okay. All right, so it says each row of Pascal's triangle gives the coefficients of the corresponding binomial expansion. So it says, for instance, if I have the seventh row, it gives the coefficients for a plus b to the 7th. Now, when I say the 7th row, it's a little bit weird, 7th row, this right here is the 0 row. Or 0, I don't know how you write 0, <laughs> the 0 row. This next one is going to be the 1st row. So that means that this one is the 7th row. Do you see why it's nice for me to call this one the 7th row? Because it starts out with, 1, 7, right? So the 6th row starts out with 1, 6, right? 5th row starts out with 1, 5. So really this 0 row is a plus b raised to the 0. What is a plus b raised to the 0? 1, right? Anything to the 0 is 1. So that's why it's just a single 1 there. But then if I had a plus b to the 1, what is a plus b raised to the 1? It's just a plus b which is 1a plus 1b. See where the coefficients come from? So 1, 1, 1, 1, right? So that's what it says on this next part here. So a plus b to the 0 is 1. And in Pascal's triangle, it just looked like a 1. a plus b to the 1 is a plus b. So that's why in Pascal's triangle is 1 and 1, because it's 1a plus 1b. Then a plus b squared, we did that at the beginning, that's 1, 2, 1, right? 1a squared, 2ab, 1b squared. a plus b cubed, 1, 3, 3, 1. 
that's where it's coming from. Do you guys see that? One, three, three, one. One, four, six, four, one. And then the last one was that one, five, ten, ten, five, one. Okay, so there's this connection. So Pascal's triangle is not only used for binomial expansions, it's also used a lot in probability. So I remember in college, I did what all of you guys do, and I kept hitting, um, like my calculator kept saying, running out of battery. Have you guys had the error message where it's like, you have three batteries? And I was like, ah, it'll be fine. And it usually is fine for like two months. <coughs> but during my probability final, it died. <laughs> and I had a bit of a panic. I was almost done with it. But I had to do Pascal's triangle to like the, the 10th row for my probability final. <laughs> so I was like writing it furiously in order to finish in time. But And then my teacher said, why did you do that? And I was like, my calculator died. He was like, why didn't you ask me? I was like, I didn't know I felt bad. <laughs> So I've forgotten this now. I should have asked my teacher. All right, so find each binomial expansion. So if I have x plus 2y cubed. So I used to teach this a different way. I used to just do it with the a's and b's. So let me kind of show you what I used to do, and then I'll show you what I do now. Okay, so I used to do a plus b cubed, and then we used to write it out like this. So my students knew that it was going to be the third row of Pascal's triangles. They wrote 1, 3, 3, 1 down. And I knew the a cubes were going to go, so a's were going to go down, a cubed, a squared, a, and the b's were going to go up. So no b, 2b, how did I do 2? 1b, 2b, 3b. And then we just connected them with pluses. Do you see how we can get what that is? Do you guys see where that comes from? That's a pretty easy process to do, right? If we know the third row of Pascal's triangle, we can do that one. But then I was like, why am I wasting all this time writing with a's and b's? Why don't I just go right to what a is and what b is? So do you guys see how the a spot is x and the b spot is 2y? Okay, we're going to use that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start out and we're going to say, oh, it's the third row of Pascal's triangle. You can write it out if you want to. Hopefully you kind of have it in front of you. So we're starting out with 1, 3, 3, 1. And give yourself lots of room. If you notice uh, on your homework for tonight, look how I printed it. I printed it sideways because sometimes you need it really long, okay? So now we go through and we're like, okay, I'm going to take the x value, this first one. And I'm going to have x three times, then I'm going to have x two times, then I'm going to have x one time, and then x no times. And then I'm going to take the next thing, which is like that b value, and I'm going to take 2y. And at the beginning, I'm going to have 2y no times, right? Some people like this part at the back. I'm going to go backwards. That's fine. So I have 2y no times, 1 time, 2 times, 3 times. So I'm going to put 2y to the first, 2y to the second, and 2y to the third. Now notice how I put 2y in parentheses, but I didn't put x in parentheses. Why do I have to put parentheses around that 2y? Because there's that number with it, right? The 2, like you're saying. So if I have 2y squared, it's going to be not just 2y squared like that. It's going to be 2y in parentheses squared, so I get 4y squared. Do you guys see that? So be careful if you have like a multiple. All right, now we just connect with pluses. We kind of put it in front of those original numbers. And then we just simplify. So the first thing is going to be x cubed. The next thing is going to be whatever 3x squared is times 2y. So you can do it off to the side if you need to. So 3x squared times 2y. We end up getting 6x squared y. Now the next part's a little bit harder because we have this squared part. So on this one I'm going to have 3x times what? 4y squared. So what's that going to be? 12xy squared. And then the last one, 2y times 2y times 2y, 8y cubed. That is our answer. Okay. Make sense? All right, so let's try some more. So if I have k minus 5 to the fourth, well, that fourth row of Pascal's triangle, if you look at it, is 1. 
four, six, four, one. So I'm spreading that way out, giving myself lots of room. I'm saying this and I'm watching some of you guys write it and you're writing it like one, four, six. Don't put them really close to each other because you're going to cram a lot of stuff in here. All right, so the first thing that I'm going to raise the fifth, the fourth, the third is going to be that K. Do you see it? So I'm going to take K and I'm going to do K to the, not fifth, K to the fourth, right? K to the third, K to the second, K, and no Ks. Okay, and then the next thing, what do you think the next one's going to be? Yeah, we need that negative. Do you guys see how this is not like A plus B raised to a power? It's got a minus in between, so I'm going to take that minus as well. So my B value is negative 5. So in the first one, I'm not going to have any of those Bs. In the next one, I'm going to have one B. Then I'm going to have two Bs, three Bs, and four Bs. And if you've given yourself plenty of space, it's real easy to see where those pluses go. The pluses go in front of the 14641 numbers. So I put the plus here, plus here, plus here, and plus here. But if you have them really smushed together, that's where it gets really confusing. So a lot of times when people start it out, I have them write plus three, plus three, like for the next one. So they remember where the pluses go. But sometimes it's so smushed together, it's hard to see those. Okay, now we're going to simplify. So the first one's easy, it's just k to the fourth. We got that. Okay, this one I'm going to do in a couple steps. So I'm going to have four k to the third times negative five. So I have negative 20 k cubed, right? The next one I have my 6k squared, but it, what's it being multiplied by? 25. So I'm going to write this separate for, for now, and then on the next step we'll multiply it. If you want to off to the side, combine those, that's fine. So the next one I'm going to get 4k, and then I'm going to have negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5. Do we know what that is? Yep, negative 125. Uh -huh. And the last one I have negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5, which is 625. Yep. So all together, we have k to the fourth minus 20k to the third plus 150k squared minus 4 times 1, 125? 500, yep. k plus 625. That is our answer. And you can kind of check to see if you're correct at the end because your k's should all be going down. k to the fourth, third, second, one, none, right? So we're good. And on that last one, like our x's, our x's went down, three, two, one, none, and the y's went up. None, one, two, three. So if you did it correctly, you usually know that you did it correctly. Yeah? Um, well, this isn't really equal to zero or anything. It's just, uh, it's not like an equation at the beginning. Do you guys see how the original problem doesn't have like equals zero? Um, so we don't try to solve this. We just expand it. Yeah, have you seen the meme out on the wall um, where it's like the instruction said, expand this, and the, the kid did. Have you seen that? <laughs> she liked my memes out there. And she was like, very funny, Bob. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so this next one, do you guys want to try it first? Yeah, go ahead and try it. Try the setup. You can use your calculator for some of the weird numbers. They do get pretty big. So the thing that I think some of you guys were messing up on is when you put your A, which is 6MN, and you put your B, which is negative 5N, you need parentheses around those things. Unless it's just x or y or something like that, then you don't need parentheses. So we're going to have 6m cubed. Then we're going to have 6m squared, 6m to the first, and then no 6m's on the end. And then we go through and we're like, okay, well, the negative fives. Well, I start out with none of the negative fives. And then I have one negative five, two negative fives, and three negative fives. So as we start simplifying, the 6m in parentheses cubed is 6m times 6m times 6m. So if I have 6 times 6 times 6, that's 216, right? 
so 216 m cubed. Okay, and the next one is going to be our 3, and then it's going to be times 6m times 6m. What's 6m squared? Like 6m in parentheses squared. 36m squared, right? And then times that negative 5. So this is all together. That's all one term that we're going to combine in the next step. And then I have plus 3 times 6m. And what about the negative 5 squared? Wow, you're already skipping to the answer now. 25, right? And then this last one is going to be negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5, which is negative 125. So on the final step, that's where I usually like combine those terms, because sometimes it's hard for me to keep all those terms in my head and do it all in my head on that previous step. So I kind of write out that stuff. So I have 3 times 36 times negative 5. Did I see 450 or 540? What was it? Was it? Is it 540? Negative 540? Thank you. So negative 540 m squared. And then plus, what's the next one? 450. Oh, that's why I'm getting them confused. Negative four, or positive 450 this time, m minus 125. Okay, so we're just simplifying all those. You can use your calculator to help you. I'm usually nice and put this on the calculator section. Okay, I don't expect you to do all that in your head. Okay, did we get it? Okay. I think it's 3 times 36 times negative 5. Huh? The 3 comes from the 1, 3, 3, 1 from the Pascal's triangle. Did you forget those numbers? Ah. All right, so this next one, same idea. Now this is the fifth row of Pascal's triangle. So this is the 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. So give yourself some room. So 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. And this is where it gets a little smushed. So that's where I'm going to put those pluses in front of each term. So I know where my terms go. See why I printed this homework sideways now? It's really wrong. All right, so we're going to go through, and our a value is 2x, and our b value is negative 3y. So if you need to write that, that's fine. You can write a is equal to 2x, b is equal to negative 3y. So we go through, and we're like, okay, I'm going to have this a value, this 2x, and it's going to be to the fifth. Then I'm going to have the 2x to the four. Then I'm going to have 2x to the third, 2x to the second and 2x to the first. Okay. Then we go through with our negative 3y. So the first one we have no negative 3y. The next one we have one negative 3y. Then two of the negative 3y's. Then three of the negative 3y's. Four of the negative 3y's. And five of the negative 3y's. Is it pretty smushed on your papers, too? Yeah. Yeah. Some people love going backwards on that second term because then they're like, okay, now I know it's going to be 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 from the right side. That's totally fine. If you want to do that, that's great. And I know a lot of people forget that zero term when they do it forwards. Like, they're like, oh, I'm going to start out with 1. It's like, no. So those powers have to add up to be 5. All right, so here we go. So I'm going to have 2x to the fifth. Do you guys know 2 to the fifth? Uh huh. So it's 32x to the fifth. This next one I'm going to have its pieces. So I'm going to say I have my 5, and then I'm going to have my 16x to the fourth, and then I'm going to have my negative 3y, and that's all going to go together. Do you guys see where I got the 16? 2 times 2 times 2. Four of those twos. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Yeah. All right, and then the next one I have my 10. What about the 2x raised to the third? 8x to the third. And then the negative 3y times negative 3y? <coughs> yep, 9y squared. And then 10 times 4x squared times what? Negative 27y cubed. Uh -huh. I'm running out of room, rough. All right, and then I have plus 5 times 2x times ooh, negative 3 to the 4th, 81y to the 4th, 
plus the very last thing? Negative 243y to the fifth. Yep. So these are some big numbers. So we definitely need our calculator on this one, right? Usually if it's to the fifth, that's where it starts getting pretty big. All right, so I have 32x to the fifth uh, minus 80 times 3, so negative 240x to the fourth y. So I just multiplied 5 times 16 times negative 3. Then the next one, can we do it without a calculator? 8 times 9 is 72 times 10, 720, so 720x cubed y squared. And then the next one, 1080x squared y cubed. Then I'm going to have plus, <laughs> I think I love how I'm making a little curve here. <laughs> this is what you guys do on your homework, don't judge. <laughs> All right, so this next one. What, what is it? It's 8,000 something? Oh no, 810? Is it 810? Okay, 810. <laughs> and then xy to the fourth and minus 243y to the fifth. That is our answer. Woo wee. That is hard. <laughs> All right, we'll skip the next one. The next one's kind of fun because you have some powers that are, you know, fractional exponents. The key to this is knowing that we have x the one half. So when you do like things like x to the 1 half cubed, it would be x to the 3 over 2. I don't have one like this on your homework. So we'll skip it. It's not on the homework or the test, yeah. It's just a fun one. All right, so it says in Chapter 12, we're going to learn about something called combinations. Okay, so in the meantime, we're going to use our calculator to compute these combinations. So a combination is going to look like C n comma r. Sometimes we write it as n over r, but there's no like fraction bar. It's not a fraction. It's just a shortcut for writing combinations. Um, this will give you the coefficient of the rth term in the nth row of Pascal's triangle. Whew, that's a little confusing. The rth term in the nth row. So it says make sure you count the zero, and zero row and the zero element. So when I'm saying the zero element, going back to our Pascal's triangle, we have our zero row. Um, this is the zero element, like along the edge, and this is the first element. So zero element, first element, second element, third element. Okay, kind of weird. All right, so it says find the coefficient on the x to the fourth, y to the ninth term in the expansion of x minus 2y to the 13th. So when I taught that pre-calculus class at IU, this was always on the midterm. So I didn't used to teach this in algebra 2 here. But then I started to think, you know, if they have to do this in college, I should probably show them how to do this. Because people on that final would always expand it out. They would do the 13 terms. Okay, we don't want to expand this out. Okay, there's actually not 13, there's 14 terms there when we expand it. So we don't want to expand this out. We want to just be able to pinpoint what term we need. Okay. So if I'm trying to find the x to the fourth, y to the ninth term, my a value was x, my y value, or my b value was negative 2y. Think about how many times I'm going to need x and the negative 2y to have those two powers, to have the 4 and the 9 there. I'm going to need 4 and 9 here. Does this make sense? Because that's going to give me x to the fourth, and it's going to give me something with y to the ninth. But I'm going to have a number out front. I'm going to have that negative 2 to the ninth as well. Okay, so in this expansions, the, the expansions that we did, these numbers, like the 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1, that was an expansion for something to the fifth, right? The 1, 5, 10, 5. This one is 5 choose 0. This one is 5 choose, whoops. We read combination, combinations as choose, so it's 5 choose 1. This one is 5 choose 2. Let's think about the powers on each of those things. So this one has x to the 5th, x to the 4th, x to the 3rd, okay? x to the 2nd, x to the 1st. Hmm. So if I have something where I have x minus 2y to the 13th, it's going to start out with that 13 choose 0, 
and then it's going to have x to the 13 and negative 2y to the 0, right? And then the next one's going to be 12 and 1, right? So what number do I put here? It's going to be c choose what? Thirteen was our power. This one's not five. The p is in the second one. This was negative two y to the one. Do you see it? Thirteen choose one. Thirteen choose zero. Do we get it? So it's going to be thirteen choose nine. It's the second number. It's the second power here. That's what goes there. So we're going to have c, 13 choose 9, it's going to be x to the 4th, and it's going to be whatever negative 2y two, uh, two to the 9th is. So let's use our calculator. So everybody get your calculators out, because I'm going to show you how to find the combinations. Yeah, so he's doing negative 2 to the 9th, and he's saying it's negative 5 12. So yeah, negative 2 in parentheses raised to the 9th is negative 512 in this year. Negative 2 to the 9th, negative 512. So we have negative 512 y to the 9th, but now we need the c 13 comma 9. And we find that on our calculator by hitting the math button. Well, first let's hit 13. So hit 13 first, then hit the math button and I told you it has to do with probability. We go over to PRB, and it's the thing that says NCR. So we're hitting that, and then we're hitting 9. So that's saying 13 choose 9. It's basically like if you have a committee, and you have 13 people that want to be on the committee, but you can only have 9. That's the number of ways you can do that. So what was the number, 512? Oh, 715. I don't know why I said that. Okay, so 715 times x to the fourth times negative 512 y to the ninth. So our final term, if I multiply by negative 512, is this huge number. So negative 366080 x to the fourth y to the ninth. So can you imagine expanding out 13 terms where you had numbers like that? Actually, 14 terms where you had numbers like that. That would be crazy, right? We don't do that. Okay, so really quickly on this last one, too. I have one more minute. I know my clock's off up there. So the eighth term of the expansion. So if I want the, um, or sorry, the x, the eighth term, that means that I'm going to have that 2x raised to the eighth, and the 3 has to be raised to what number? To the 2, because those powers have to add to be 10, whatever this power was. And what we put in the front is 10, which was our original power, and 2, which is that last number. If you mess up and you put 8, it actually works as well, because 10 choose 2 is the same as 10 choose 8, which we'll talk about when we get to probability. All right, so we're going to do um, 10, math, go over to probability, NCR 2, we get 45. And then we're going to do 2 to the 8th, which is 256. And then we're going to do 3 to the 2nd. So I'm going to have 45 times, what was it, 256 x to the 8th times 9. And then I just multiply those three numbers together. Times 9 times 45. So our answer is 103,680. 103,680 x to the 8th. Crazy, huh? All right, we're going to stop there.